Good morning. It is Stitch Along Friday and it is um, a very, very dark day outside here in uh, Sydney, British Columbia, where I'm streaming from. Usually our weather at this time, it's August, you could expect, you know, beautiful, sunny, but we've had, I mean, it's just a really dark morning. I can't believe it. It looks a little bit like autumn. Good morning, Petra. <laughs> I hear the this, this song in your voice. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. Good morning. Good to see you. Lisa, I want you to know that every time I do a stream, I have this picture sitting right here. I know that I'm um, kind of thinking and, and feeling a little bit like I'm thinking about the past, but you are part of my stream. You're still here. You're just in a picture. <laughs> I just never uh, forget the fact that, you know, this would never have happened if we hadn't done this together. And hopefully I will manage the, the you know, the streaming with you soon. We have to get you set up so your lighting is good. Because I think where your desk is right now might not be so good. And we're going to have to set up a lighting and a camera on you. And I can't do that until I'm up there with you. Otherwise, like, how would we do it, right? There's just no way. <laughs> anyway. Good morning, Margaret Andrew. Very good to see you. And Liz, hi. <laughs> good to see you too. Uh, good morning, Donna. I haven't forgotten about you, just so you know. I know that it's been a, a, at least a week since we, since I kind of thought that I was going to be able to send you the new Christmas um, drum pin cushion, and that is coming. It's just that I got carried away and started stitching on the new Bling Tree 2.0. <laughs> So those of you who haven't heard about this, we have a, a bling tree, which I should have brought the model, but anyway, um, and now I have just revamped the whole bling tree. And now you can see I have actually stitched a lot. Like I stitched probably four days in a row, at least four or five hours a day and got that done. And now I'm going to put in a little bit of the darker shades so that the tree looks better. But it's a completely new tree, everyone. This is not the same tree as the bling tree. I know it looks similar, but it's not the same. And it actually will be easier for you to stitch because I found that the previous um, bling tree was a little bit challenging. You know, there was a lot of colors in it, color, lots of color changes. So in this case, I found that this was fairly easy to accomplish, <laughs> which I know that this is music to your ears because what we want is we want a tree that we can decorate with wonderful new um, um, decorations. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so Donna, not forgotten you thinking about you. Hopefully this week we'll be able to get something to you. Okay. Uh, let's see who else is here. Carla got here after three weeks. It says th Springfield, uh, Missouri. Oh, that's where you are hot today. Oh, I wish it was a little warmer here today. So send me some of your heat. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it, Carla. <laughs> uh, let's see who else is here. Um, uh, yes, Lisa says, yeah, I have to set up some lighting and reposition my desk set. You don't have to reposition the desk. No, it's only when we're doing um, Zoom calls that you need to be at your computer. But if you're just, if you've got a separate camera somewhere else, you can actually set yourself up anywhere else. So no, we don't have to worry about your desk, okay? <laughs> the desk is fine where it is. That's great. Okay, Anita is here, um, Anita Farhayen. I have to say it in a Dutch uh, accent. Kathy Bird, hello. Haven't seen you for a while. And thanks, Anita, for saying good morning. Marty says, uh, morning. It's going to be in the low 80s. The, oh, you've got Canadian wildfires. Look, don't call it Canadian, okay? <laughs> we don't own the wildfire smoke. <laughs> uh, Canadian or U.S. wildfire smoke is everywhere now. I know this is the last part of the hottest parts of uh, the 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 season really and this is no fun it's no fun here it's no fun in washington state either you know we actually all are suffering from this kind of thing so i empathize with you though and i certainly empathize with those of you who have some uh no you know no rain in sight so nice that you've got a little bit of rain showers that'll hopefully bring down some of that ash in the air and Dorothy says, good morning, sending light and love to all. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> That's a perfect greeting. Light and love to all of you. Okay, so it looks like the first little flurry is over, that we've got a lot of people on board. This is great. Um, I did put in the uh, join in, uh, you know, the 
the little message that says come and join into our stream i did put that we have got um the spooky treats leaflet uh, for sale now and really like Petra was telling me that there were so many people who when she was uh, taking care of our Facebook group uh, for Victoria Sampler she said we had so many requests so many requests uh, for just the printed leaflet and they kept asking if and and really truly uh, you know we weren't even planning on doing that but then we thought well you know we could probably do a pre-sale for that too so we are <laughs> and we haven't sold a printed leaflet for a long time because of the necessity, of course, for shipping it, right? And because I, the studio is now no longer um, uh, there, and like I've sold the place where the studio was, um, we had a little bit of a hard time figuring out how we could ship things at all. And we can't certainly can't do a huge shipping thing. Uh, not for the time being, and, and we'll see whether or not we can actually accomplish that in the future. But for now, we are, uh, thanks to Lisa, who is, you know, jumping into the fray, um, able to ship the kits that were pre-ordered. And by the way, those kits are going to be smashing. Don't think that just because this leaflet is available that you are not um, uh, very special to us because the the kits themselves look fabulous and the threads are glorious and you get it all in the same package. So this is just for those people who literally could not afford or didn't really want to stitch with silks, which I don't, I can't believe that. Anyway, so this is the leaflet that will be um, for sale. We just had these printed and so we're, we've got it and you can see the design at the top. Whoa, let's get this so that you can see it better. This is the actual design, so there's really a lot of detail in it, as you can see, and it really looks nice as a uh, framed piece. Unfortunately, I don't have the model for the framed piece, but you can kind of see how this looks and what this actually looks like. It's just wonderful to hang over your mantle or in a, in a place where a horizontal piece for, hor for Halloween uh, looks the best. Or you can follow Lisa's amazing uh, color photos and instructions inside. Look at this. Just all of the instructions that you could possibly want, showing you exactly what you should be doing when, you know, these are all very, very, um, they were done at the same time as Lisa's finishing. So you can imagine they are actually really good instructions. And so it'll look a little bit like that when you're done. So those of you who are willing to give that a chance, this is the piece. I'm going to show it again, even though I've shown it before. This is one side of it, and you can see the detail in this is phenomenal. There's so many little little areas. You can even take it apart and um, just use certain little sections and make little, what do you call them, little ornaments out of this. So this is the entire thing. I hope that you are happy with that and that these will uh, make you happy. And by the way, it's a limited edition. We can't um, we can't keep selling it for now. So this this printed um, leaflet will only be available as a limited edition for now. Okay. So uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Petra, for putting that <laughs> that link on. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay. Jane Morrison is here. Good morning, all from another hot and sunny day in Atlanta. Gosh, when it isn't a hot and I don't know. Living in Atlanta sounds like you absolutely need an air conditioner, <laughs> Jane. Donna, oh, good, not to worry. I stitched an ornament for my granddaughter. You did? I'm so happy for you. I know how important it is to keep stitching. So, But I just don't want you to think that I have forgotten you because I didn't get in touch to let you know what the problem was. In fact, I got a little lost in stitching this week which is so restful. I haven't stitched like that literally for over a year. I, I'm just so grateful that I got my mojo back. Liz, I know what you mean. Uh, Joanna says, good morning, good morning. Uh, Marty says, my work in progress is the sugar plum ornament, which takes a lot of stitching. Have you noticed that? I'm glad you're doing your own colors because it, I mean, they're very simple colors, right? But there's a lot of hard anger in there to make the sugar plum uh, the little flare out things that's a lot of hard anger so way to go thank you Petra for putting that link on good morning B how are you oh you're in sunny Hubert Saskatchewan 
I didn't know this uh, Saskatchewan would get here. Oh yes, I guess so because you're close to the to the lakes as well. Ellen Meldrum, hello, little late joining. That's okay. It's always good to have anybody here, no matter how late. We don't count lateness. <laughs> this is a stream where everyone's welcome at whatever time. Joanna says, I still have to put my drum pin, pin cushion together. You know, that is a, um, it's something, I don't know about you, but I find it difficult to um, do those concentrated kind of things in the summer. So I kind of think that it's easier to do those when the colder weather starts hitting and you've got longer stretches of time that you can really focus on the, on the um, finishing. And I think Lisa would agree with you. She's the one who's done a, almost all the finishing of everything I've ever created. And I have to say, I think that your finishing, Lisa, probably uh, is better in the fall, winter, spring than it is in the summer when, you know, things are warm and you're outside and you'd rather be um, uh, swimming or, or stitching <laughs> rather than finishing. So I know you can do it, Joanna. Great. Liz says stitching at least once a week for a few hours with your friends. Exactly. Just having that is also good. But remember, I didn't stitch for over a year. And before that, I stitched almost every day for 25 years. So <laughs> having that hiatus, I think, was necessary. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa, that was a double, a double sneeze. <laughs> And, and I think that when I started stitching this time, I thought, okay, can I do it? Can I still do it? And I can. So my hands are good. Everything is good. I am really thrilled. So Liz, once a week is just fine. You're a busy girl. You have so many other things to do. So that makes a big difference. What does it say? Let's see. Dorothy says, I finished Beach Cottage. Oh, good. Last night and began the Thanksgiving sampler. We're moving into fall. <laughs> That's good. I can hardly wait to see what you do with the beach cottage. Are you going to frame it? I think you probably are, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. Jane Morrison says there's no living in Atlanta without an air conditioner um, because of the heat and humidity. It runs most of the day. So I don't know. There are people who are kind of allergic to that dry air and stuff. Do you have a dehumidifier too or do you not need one? I know that when I was in Mazatlan, we had a dehumidifier. That was a big one stood on the floor and we would pull out this, this bucket uh, twice a day of the um, humidity that was taken out of the air. And of course, an air conditioner does make things drier, but we still couldn't get rid of the um, humidity even inside the apartment. So I'm wondering, is that the same in Atlanta? Just wondering. <laughs> I'm curious because I know Atlanta is a really hot place. Yeah, you've got heat and humidity. Yeah. Lisa said, I agree, Taya. I find it difficult to do finishing in the summer months. It's a fall activity. Exactly. So, Joanna, you will finish it. Just, you know, wait for the cooler months. Ah, Petra says, bless you, times two. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering what you were talking about, but thank you. That's such a nice thing to hear because I know that when you sneeze like that, uh, you know, that's what people have to say is bless you because, you know, you never know. It could be a little dust devil inside you. Ah, thanks, Liz. And Lisa, thank you. <laughs> Both of you. All of you are so sweet. Okay. I was noticing, by the way, um, that when I was stitching the bling tree, Oh, it looks like your de dehumidifier runs all summer long too, Dorothy. Yeah, exactly. Well, I get that. Now, now I get it in Mazatlan. Um, when I was stitching this, I noticed that I have, um, I have really nearsighted vision, which is great because it's good for stitching. But I now need the addition of a um, enough so that I can see really close. Those of you who wear glasses or in need glasses when it comes to stitching, I think we're going to have to do a, a bit of a, a show on glasses because I have three pairs of glasses. They're all very similar. Like they just have a slightly different, uh, uh, what do you call it, a slightly different arm. And I've tried to make them so that, you know, this one has a different arm and this one, is for my computer and has this glaze over it, which actually reflects really badly the lights and stuff around here. But it has this blue glaze so that I don't get harmed by my computer, which I'm on a lot. So apparently it, it helps protect your eyes. And then I've got my regular glasses, which are, 
what do you call them, progressives, so that I can wear these during the day. Same kind of glasses, but there, there are ways that I can see here and I can see far distance so I can drive. And then I have my stitching glasses. That's what I was really getting at. And my stitching glasses are literally uh, far seeing at the top and then there's a line that runs straight across. And this part here actually allows me to see about 10 inches away extremely clearly. So I had bifocals made because when I'm stitching, I like to look up at the TV or see what the time is or do anything else. So having those glasses on um, that have the entire thing is for looking up close. And I mean close, not reading distance, stitching distance, uh, which is at least 10 inches instead of the usual, what, 16. Anyway, so when I, when I used to have those kinds of glasses, I couldn't see up. I couldn't see anyone in the room. So this actually is just a, such a great thing because I can look up close and then I can look around and look at the TV and see what's going on there. So I actually don't miss <laughs> anything on television anymore. And I don't miss, you know, any other kind of clues that someone else is in the room with me. So I just thought I'd mention that today as a bit of a hint to those of you who wear glasses, don't be afraid to buy several different pairs uh, to suit the, all the activities that you absolutely like to do. Let's see about people who also have things. Oh, Jean says we don't have a dehumidifier. Air conditioner takes care. Well then, that's true. Then it's not so overly dry and then you're not so shocked when you go outside. Uh, Magali says, oh, let's see. I have to see the translation. Happy weekend. Happy weekend, Magali. Very nice to see you. Elizabeth says, I use a magnifying glass that goes around my neck. I've seen you wear that. My reading glasses are not very good for stitching. Again, I'm saying go to an optometrist and get them to give you reading, not reading glasses, but stitching glasses. That was my whole point. It isn't that reading glasses are absolutely no good. They're just too far away when you're reading, uh, you know, this, I'm, I'm looking here. <laughs> Let's see. This is stitching and, and this is reading glasses right there. So I find that reading glasses just don't do it for me. And Kathy says, I have stitching glasses because I have an astigmatism. If I've caught if I've caught without them, I just put magnifying glasses over my regular ones, so the astigmatism will be there. Okay, this is a great way to do it. And Petra says, "You just reminded me to get my glasses instead of squinting at the computer." <laughs> yeah, it's a great idea to have good good glasses. Tedra says, "I use tiny half reading glasses in front of my regular glasses, wearing them down a bit on my nose, and it's perfect to magnify the linen a bit better." absolutely excellent a number of us do that here and I only need and then you've given some numbers which is good for everyone else reading this is excellent I also have astigmatism and I have um, some other issues with my eyes and I have a real problem wearing two pairs of glasses I'll tell you because my nose is very small <laughs> it's very short <laughs> thanks dad <laughs> Uh, and those of you who have a nose big enough to carry two pairs of uh, bridges, uh, way to go. Tedra says, yes, the small reading glasses allow me to see the TV above my stitching. And that's actually what I was getting at. Whatever you do, I found my optometrist was uh, really didn't understand me until I actually showed her pictures of how I, I did my stitching. And, you know, I had my partner, Richard, uh, taking the pictures. And so I took the picture in to show the optometrist because they kept saying, well, you want to be at least reading distance away. <laughs> and I go, no. <laughs> uh, and Dorothy also uses the second ones. Okay, says Liz. Uh, Ellen says, yes, I have bi bifocals so that I can stitch and look up at the TV. Ellen, you're my girl. It's just what I came up with and I'm, I know that I'm not the only one. Ellen, I'm so glad that <laughs> we're, we're stitchers the same. Anita says, I, I bought some glasses on a strap that fold over my regular glasses and leaves room on in top to watch TV. Whoa, what a cool, cool thing. I've never seen those, Anita. Thank you very much for sharing that. Maybe you can put a picture up on the, on the um, group sometime and just you know show the glasses themselves folding glasses and how they fold over your regular glasses I'm interested everyone who stitches has to new, do something about vision and Fran says good morning everyone good morning from Utah Kathy says when you go to the eye doctor for your stitching glasses 
take a project that you were stitching with you. I did that. <laughs> I know what you mean. My eye doctor didn't believe I really wanted glasses to focus so close. Exactly. So I actually did that and I showed along with the photograph, etc. I actually had that person try to find out how to make a cross on the, because they didn't cross stitch, obviously. Okay, and, and it was a, a woman optometrist, so she wasn't averse to trying it. And I said, here, you try it. And then I said, okay, now I'm going to measure how close you have to hold it. Because you do have to hold it about nine to 10 inches away if you're going to see anything at all without going cross-eyed. Lisa says, I have computer glasses, bifocals for watching TV and stitching, just exactly, progressives and reading glasses that I never use. So you've got the three plus reading glasses, but you don't read. <laughs> That's okay. You've got the glasses for them. Anyway, I think that this is a really good discussion because we all have our different ways that we handle things. But people who are um, just in need of some uh, corrective vision might be interested to know how we all deal with it because we don't all deal with our vision the same way. Some of us rely completely on a magnifying uh, glass with a light, which I do also with my reading glasses. I still use the magnifier uh, at times, not all the time. And I really, really recommend big light. Just make sure you have that light over your shoulder one way or the other. Because if you don't have good light, I think that no matter what kind of glasses you have, you won't be able to see as well. And when we're stitching with these, um, you know, beautiful linens, they can be 32 count, 28 count, which are the ones that I usually recommend. But those of you who are stitching on 40 count or more, you know, that makes everything so much smaller. Or uh, petite crosses, for instance, those are also very hard to see. And you want to do them well. So I recommend anyone who is having problems, ask on the group. And, uh, th and this is for people who are watching this um, as a replay. Um, those of you who are not, who are here are doing well. <laughs> You're all already uh, managing your vision. Um, but those of you who have, uh, are watching this on replay and you're finding yourself kind of not being able to stitch as well anymore and you think, oh, I guess I can't do it anymore, look and see if maybe it's your vision because a lot of people kind of ignore that when they haven't had to do, deal with that all their lives. Okay, Marty says, I take off my glasses when I stitch. There you go. See, you've got really good nearsightedness, which I had most of my life, so I know exactly what you mean. Um, let's see, Liz says my optometrist didn't know what cross stitch was. <laughs> so I made him a small eyeball framed in a small embroidery hoop. Oh, what a cute idea, Liz. I love it. A small eyeball framed in a small embroidery. Oh, that is adorable. It's really good for his office. I bet that he loves that. Deborah uh, chewing, tuning, sorry, I usually have to take off my glasses to see the stitch. I guess I need better glasses. Well, either that or you can see better without your glasses, which is common with people who are nearsighted. However, if you do want to see closer up, go to your optometrist office to make an appointment to see what they can do for you. And if they can do anything, that'll be helpful. Or you might just for now need a, um, you know, drugstore type of magnifier uh, glasses because those magnifier glasses will perhaps also aid your naked eye, which you can also use. Petra says, I love that too. Okay, so uh, not to get carried away here, but I do want you all to know that this one is now available on our, com uh, on our computer, <laughs> on our website as a printed leaflet, which we haven't sold for over a year. We haven't sold any printed leaflets, mainly because they require shipping. But Lisa has offered, because we had so many people asking for just the printed leaflet, she has offered to um, do the shipping and, you know, that's a lot of trouble. So those of you who are uh, thinking of buying just the, uh, the leaflet itself now, by all means, go ahead. You can do that right away, but you won't get the printed leaflet until we have them all, all printed. Like this is the only one I've had printed so far. So we are doing a pre-sale, same as we did with the kit, so that we've got good numbers and we know how many to order. And that will be a limited edition of this printed uh, stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, ophthalmologist appointment next month. Yay, Deborah! <laughs> it's so good that we love stitching. We got to get good eyes, right? And if we haven't got good eyes or good enough eyes, so we need all of the help we can get. 
Okay, what else was I going to show you? Oh, yes, I was going to show you um, two small farms, and I wanted to show you these because it's almost the end of the season. And the one that I like the best is, uh, it's going to be last. This is the one I like the best. This is called um, Babe's Honey Farm because we used to have a lady here who had a honey farm. She started actually in, uh, or bee farm, she started in, um, right in town in Victoria in, in a regular residential lot. She kept a few bees and then she got bigger and bigger. So Babe's Honey became a staple um, with our, um, in, in the local area. Come on, come on, do a little bit of focusing. <laughs> okay, there we go. Anyway, so then she ended up going to the peninsula, which is closer to outside of Victoria proper, and she bought a property and then put on all of her um, beehives, and oh my goodness, that Babe's Honey went not just in Victoria, but all over BC. Not sure how far Babe's Honey went, actually. So it's still going, although she's passed away. She sold her property and her family did. And so she had this little stand outside for years, um, back in the 50s, as I recall. So it's a real local landmark is to go and see Babe's Honey Farm and to buy their special honey. There's another a competing honey farm, and I'm thinking about that, too, because I love uh, to see the honey farms. And then this is called um, the Orchard, sorry, Oldfield Orchard. Oldfield is a street that's also on the peninsula, and we call it the peninsula, which is where all of our small farms generally are in this neighborhood. Um, and so this is a place that we call Oldfield Orchard. They have, you know, um, locum berries there and all sorts of raspberries, etc. They have um, all the different trees, uh, fruit trees. They have huge numbers of different kinds of fruit trees. And of course, they have also fruit pies <laughs> at the bottom. I absolutely love this one also because it gives you that feeling of um, fruition, actually. And, you know, you can, um, all the small farms give me such a good feeling, mainly because the people who own them love their small farms. They're not taken over by these big conglomerates. They're made by and, and created by the people who actually till the soil themselves or with their, with their tractors, etc. So our little farms here on the peninsula, just so you know what I'm talking about, there's a little arm here uh, off the Vancouver Island, um, and that's where I live. Is the Vancouver Island is here. There's a little arm at the bottom where Victoria's at the very bottom, and I live up on that peninsula at the, near the top. And in between are just a lot of small farms. Very, very good for us to have these local farms in case there's some issue as far as getting to the island is concerned. Old Field Archard, I haven't stitched this one yet. <laughs> Got it on the list, that's good. Uh, Sheila says, I love these two pieces. I will have to do those because of my love of the peninsula. I'm with you, Sheila. I absolutely love it here. And when I started all the small farms, I thought to myself, this is this is like commemorating this the the idea of and the um the the good thing about having a farm that isn't part of a big conglomerate because they're doing organic, you know, they're um, making sure that they can turn over the soil and that it rests in between. They have that option to, to create a beautiful farm and a, a sustainable farm rather than uh, raping the land <laughs> of all of its goodness and then letting it uh, turn into a dust bowl. So from my point of view, I absolutely love all these farms. And my grandfather was a small farmer. He had a dairy farm. So it's kind of part of the thing I grew up with. I remember going to the farm with my brother or by myself and living on the farm for a couple of weeks every summer uh, as I was growing up and those are my favorite memories. <laughs> Love shelling peas on the porch for instance. Oh I know everyone has these memories but small farms yeah kind of like them. So anyway I have to say it one more time because our um, Spooky Treats pincushion is on sale not no, not on sale, for sale. Very rare, very special, and we're very grateful to be able to do this. It's a pre-sale. We won't send them out until the end of September, just so you know, because this, this sale will, or this um, buying opportunity, <laughs> whatever you call it, actually isn't over until mid-August, so we've, you've got a month, uh, just like people did when they bought the, the kit. Now, the kit itself is going to be sent out much earlier, 
the people who bought the kit, you're going to love it. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that you decided that you were going to buy it because I think that you will absolutely love all the stuff that's in it. So um, having this is at least something and it also is um, a, a, a leaflet that looks and, and um, actually looks very similar, probably even better than our usual ones. So it can add it to your Victoria Sampler collection also. Okay, my dears, I'm going to stop talking about those because I've said it three times and I wanted to be sure that those of you who missed it at the first at the first instance didn't miss it the second time, third time. Okay, so, oh, is it already that time? It is. It's angel time. Angel card time, okay. I have this little glass sitting right here, just so you know. <laughs> They're full of angel cards and I just have to randomly pick one because this is the, this is the time. Thanks, Dorothy. I can't wait for that kit to be sold. Uh, and you know that Lisa and I are going to put them together ourselves. And I'm going to go up and visit Lisa and, and help mail them. I'm just so excited because I get to visit Lisa at the same time. Angel card. Oh, that's very sweet. Treat yourself with gentleness. Yep. It's something that I sometimes forget to do. I try to treat others with gentleness. And that's already hard. <laughs> Treating myself in any nice way is a really difficult thing to do. Sometimes you just think to yourself, you know, uh, all I'm doing are mistakes or errors or whatever. And uh, or the things that I say and do might not be what I wished I had said or did. So when you find yourself feeling a little bit negative about yourself, remember to treat yourself with gentleness so that you are treating others like you would have them, um, how, like how you would treat them as well. Looking forward to you coming up in a couple of weeks. I know it won't be long, right? Um, I think that it's going to be probably more like three weeks rather than two, but boy, am I looking forward to it. Oh, sweet angel card, exactly. Thank you very much, those of you who have managed to join in and stay with me this long. <laughs> I always love talking about stitching. In this case, for some reason, I got a hold of my glasses. and I thought, we haven't talked about our vision for some time. So I hope that that was helpful to those of you who were uh, thinking to yourselves, hey, I'm, I don't know whether I can stitch anymore. My eyes aren't doing so well. And by the way, I have the floaters. I have all of the things that people have in their eyes. And that sometimes gets in the way too. But if you persist, you know, you just blink a little bit. <laughs> you can get those out of the way too. So take care of yourselves, everyone. Take care of your eyesight. Um, be sure to um, uh, make, make yourselves stitch a little bit uh, every day so that you feel like, you know, that meditative feeling come over you. And I, I don't know about you, but when I started stitching and I felt so good, I thought, oh, I have missed this. So I hope you continue to stitch until you can't anymore. <laughs> have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see you next week um, on Friday uh, with another edition of um, Stitch Along Friday. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>